Hi, I'm Dave Merchant from AcrobatUsers.com and today we're looking at how we can use Acrobat 10 Pro to enhance a PDF file with some unifying elements and overlays, just a few moments work to make a file look an awful lot better. Now, often when you're making a PDF file in a single application, you'll do most of this work in the original file, but there are limits. You could have problems putting in things like borderless backgrounds, and if you're making a PDF by bringing together pages from different content, maybe the text is from Word, there's a table from Excel, the cover sheet was from InDesign, getting all of these pages to match exactly can be very difficult, if not impossible. With Acrobat, we can combine the content into a PDF file and then apply these elements afterwards. It means it's very easy to make the file look professional, but also we can reuse the content without having to alter the original documents at all. In this example, we have a relatively plain looking PDF exported from Word and we need to bring in a summary page in front of all of these current pages, send a copy to an important client but on official corporate paper, fax a copy to a contractor on plain paper, mark both as confidential, with the copy sent to the client comment enabled and identified as a pre-release copy but only when it's printed, and we only have the PDFs and we only have a few minutes, but it's not a problem, so let's get started. First, bringing in the summary page. We can go to the Tools pane, Pages panel, and choose Insert from File, or we can go and open the Page Thumbnails panel, open the little toolbar, and choose Insert Pages from File. Same result, we get to pick our summary sheet, which is a PDF, single page, select it, decide where it goes. It's going before the first page, click OK, in it goes doesn't have to be the same page size as everything else, in this case it happens to be, but we could have brought in landscape files, anything we wanted, but it has changed the page number of everything else. So our original page one is now page two, and that's a bit of a problem because they do actually have page numbers in their footers, which now don't match the toolbar. So the easiest way to fix that is to put page one in its own section. I'm going to right click it, go to number pages, put it in a new section using Roman numerals, click OK and now our summary page is page I and everything else automatically goes back to the right sequence 1 2 3 so if someone searched for page 8 in the toolbar they will indeed go to page 8 next we need to add a header and a footer so from the tools pane pages panel header and footer choose to add one it's telling us there already is one this was a PDF exported from Word Word headers and footers become PDF headers and footers. So if I choose to replace existing, I'm actually going to kill off my page numbers. And I kind of like them, so I'm going to say add new, leaving the existing ones entirely intact. Um, I will put in at the start here that this is confidential. Down at the bottom, I think we'll put in a copyright message. And I think we'll say here when it was issued but I want a kind of European looking date because I'm a kind of European looking person so we'll go date month year OK insert date and it does it automatically for us and I think we need to be a fair amount bolder a fair amount bigger and a fair amount redder marvellous I can choose how to apply this in which case I don't actually want it on page one the summary sheet so I'll start on page two these are absolute numbers so there's no I involved in this dialogue Click OK. I'll also um, let me have a quick look at how number two is looking. I think we'll move that left margin in a bit to just separate that copyright from the rest of the text. Click OK. And we have our headers and footers on every page apart from page one. At this point, we're good to go with our fax to our contractor. If we put the page background on and then tried to fax it, the background would look horrible and get in the way of the text on a black and white fax machine. So I can simply print this PDF now to a virtual fax machine or a multifunction printer and while it's whistling its way off to our contractor and slowly exuding paper across his desk, we can carry on adding content to this to make the copy to send to our important client. And they want proper paper. I'm working down this list. Next one, background. This is what we're going to need, so I will add one of those. And I get to either put in a plain color, a bit boring, or bring in a file. And I've been sent our corporate styled paper as a PDF file. It came from InDesign. I'll select it, choose Open, 
and by default it actually gets it right. It puts it behind the page, scales it properly, 100% opacity, everything's marvellous. I want it on every page this time, and under appearance options I can decide when it appears, whether it's on printouts or on screen. I actually want it all the time, so I'll keep it like that, and I'll say OK. And there we have our nice background on every page. Now you could have done that in Word, but borderless backgrounds in Word are actually quite tricky to get right. Borderless backgrounds in PDF, single click, doesn't care, applies it, everything's happy. And you could have brought in any type of file, it would have automatically made it into a PDF and put it as a background layer. So even if you're starting with a JPEG image or something else, not a problem, just the same. We're almost there, but we need to mark this if our client prints it out to make sure they know that it's not a copy to use for reference purposes. So I'm going to work down the list to the next option. You can see where I'm going. Watermark, add one of those. A watermark is like a background, but it goes on top. And it's basically the same dialogue, but we get this extra feature to add in some text. So now I can say pre-release copy do not publish. I will center it. I will make it, you're guessing, yes indeed, red. And we'll start by making that about 80% of the page width and setting it at a nice jaunty angle of something around 60 degrees. There we go. I still want to be able to read the content though, so I'm going to bring the opacity down probably something around 20%. So it's visible, but it doesn't get in the way. And under appearance options, I'm going to only show it when it's printed. That way it's not going to get in the way on the screen, but if they print it out, they will be carefully reminded about the status of this document. So, OK. Again, with page range options, I can choose where this applies. I'll apply it to everything in this case. And I can also gently nudge this around if I need to, to get it to center on the document or to avoid something like a header or a footer. I'll click OK. And obviously you can't see anything because it's only going to appear on a printout, but we're now good to go. We can save this file out with commenting enabled by going to the file menu and choosing save as reader extended PDF, enable commenting and measuring. And when we save this out for the important client, we can now either email that to the client we can use the share pane to send it via either email or send now. We could even start a shared review if we want, but there's only one client, so an ad hoc system of sending the file backwards and forwards works just as well. And hopefully the end result of this looks like we've put a fair amount of work into it, when in reality with Acrobat we haven't done a whole lot. But if we're going to do this more than once, it would kind of make sense if we didn't have to go through all of this process over and over again. And we don't. Because in Acrobat 10, with Actions, we can automate pretty much everything we've done into a single step. If I go back now to my original version, all boring like, I've actually made myself an action. So I can go to the Tools menu, I can go into Action Wizard, and I've got something called Prepare Draft, which will add the background, add the header and footer, and add the watermark. And if I run that action, it's done. Bang, sorted. We've even, if I look at the print preview of this file, got our watermark in place. Single action, easy to implement, and you could apply that to one file or a whole range of files all in a single click. Your client will think you've done a lot of work. Um, assuming they don't get around to watching this video, I think we can live with their belief that you've pulled out all the stops for them. Um, I won't tell them if you won't.